So action bolts have received a pretty simple but hefty buff quite a while back, and although it doesn't look a lot on paper, it's actually a lot more powerful than you think. With Void 3.0, Witch Queen and a ton of other things coming in February for us, now is the perfect time to put these on and give them a whirl in PvE or PvP. Now I'm going to show you a PvE build that focuses on them the most, and from here I'll show you ways to improve on the current build and why you should give them a chance even for endgame purposes. Now that does sound crazy, but on here, on Hero's channel, we live by the words crazy and I assure you, what I have to offer you is something you can bring into any content you like with no fear or repercussions. All I will say though is that once you do start to use them, you'll have a hard time to take them off afterwards. So like usual, if you enjoyed the video then I'd really appreciate a like and sub as it goes a long way for me. For the subclass, we shall be using the Attunement of Chaos for the Chaos Settlement Grenade perk, which we'll be making full use of when combined with the Controverse Hold Exotic. Both Chaos Accelerant and Controverse Hold are two of the most common and best setups that you will ever use because of how powerful and synergized the two can be. Now before we head in, first we need to understand why Axions are viable as they are now. Quite a while back, Bungie adjusted how some of the subclasses and abilities will be working once Witch Queen comes around the corner, and Axions received a buff in a few areas. Firstly, they received a buff in damage against PvE combatants by 15%, and secondly, bolt tracking has been increased by 33%, thirdly, bolt movement has increased by 10%, and lastly, bolt travel distance increased by 15%. All of these vastly improved the grenade in all game modes by making them more aggressive in nature, and this here is where we can use them to our advantage. The one issue of using vortex grenades in endgame content is that against some combatants, you can completely miss if you're not accurate with your shots, and this can come down to combatants moving away the moment you throw it, to even simply miscalculating your aim. Vortex grenades with Controverse and Chaos Accelerant make a deadly combo for causing extra damage against combatants, specifically champions, and the fact that you'll be getting back a random amount of energy means that your grenades can do more damage over a pretty hefty amount of time. But the buff now also makes them viable to outdo what Vortex fails at, and that is that they can track really damn well and also do a lot of damage when they connect. It may not be pulling in the numbers that a Vortex does, but its tracking and damage alone is enough to one-shot minor to major combatants while you're behind cover, safe from damage. Now on top of that, we do also have the Entropic Pour ability, so we can use that to quickly charge our grenades if we get a chance to, and we do also have the Bloom ability that can trigger a Void Explosion, which can be useful for taking out a number of combatants that get caught within this blast. It's also recommended that you try to aim for around 80 to 100 discipline as you want your grenades amount to come back quite fast with everything on top being shoved down your throat. Mod wise, we have the Emitter Ordnance, Bountiful Well and Explosive Wellmaker attached so we can create wells via the explosion, which will yield us back a full amount of grenades if everything goes as planned. That ideally should cover you to use actions as many times as you like, as the amount you get back is very generous and very useful in the most chaotic environments you'll end up in, although there are a few downsides to this which I will go over later. Now weapon wise, you want weapons that can counter champions and such as I tend to use the build in endgame primarily when I can. For this, simply having the Arbalist as your main will get you very far in endgame and it's great for GMs. The Arbalist received a buff to now essentially have anti-barrier attacks, so you can now destroy barrier champions in one shot, and also apply a, I believe a 50% kinetic debuff on targets, basically making the weapon even more lethal than it should be. In endgame, this weapon with particle deconstruction will become your best friend, even lover if you're lucky, with how useful it covers a number of areas for you. However, when playing something less intensive, I would opt into a weapon that has adrenaline junkie, so we can make the connection between abilities and weapons. If that's not your thing, then a Traveler's Chosen with Catalyst is also really useful to equip for all level content, and is not to be missed. For secondary, we have the Point of Stag Bow, which is an art position frame bow with a flexible tree of perks to use. I'm starting to find this bow rather useful for endgame content simply because of the Warpaw effect it has when up against champions and mini bosses. You'll notice its effects are quite strong as the amount of damage you do is significantly more noticeable compared to using one without it, although using something like the Monarch with its continuous damage is even more effective if you have the room to use it. 
On top of that, we also get the archer's tempo perk, which can decrease the time it takes to fire off the next shot, which is always handy for keeping a overload to a simple grunt stunned for a bit longer, as long as we land a critical hit, of course. Now, of course, if you want to have a bow in your primary slot instead, then the Whispering Slab is a great pick to use, as that can get Vorpal as well. Plus, these are the only bows in the game that can get Vorpal, so have fun with that, as I'm pretty sure Whispering Slab will be going come Witch Queen. For Heavy, we then have the Threaded Needle with Frenzy and Field Prep, and once again, using this with Particle Deconstruction will net you some sweet damage over time, and make it a bit more viable than a version with Vorpal attached. Truth be told, as we already have another linear fusion on us, unless you're looking for more damage to use against bosses to mini bosses over time, I'm happy for you to swap the weapon out for something else such as a rocket launcher with last impression or a heavy machine gun with firefly, or even a void sword. Any of these options can still fit into the build as we have mods such as Explosive Wellmaker available to use, except for the sword of course. For the stats, as mentioned, we want to invest in the discipline as much as we can, with intellect following after, if possible. Now, naturally, with Controverse Hold, all we need to do is get our stat up to around 80 to 100, and that should be enough for us to go on our merry way from there. However, when entering high content, we want to make sure we have a sure way of generating energy for this area as much as we can, so that we can never run out in tough situations. For this, I have Elemental Ordnance for creating wells via grenades, Explosive Wellmaker to create even more wells as we go, as the Bloom Effect will trigger this mod, Absolution for when we create Orbs of Power, and Bountiful Well for even more wells when produced. This overall, when there is an easy 4 to 5 wells that will instantly refill grenades the moment we collect them, and then have Absolution on top to basically finish off anything that's left over. Now, we can of course expand on this by adding in the Protective Light mod for that extra layer of defense once we hit critical health. Because, of course, where we're going, there's probably going to be a lot of death around us. I'm using the Taking Charge mod so I can activate the Protective Light mod from all the power, although we can change this to Elemental Charge instead as that will allow us to become charged with light via worlds instead. As the build is heavily worlds focused, we can opt into this and use this as a faster way to always become protected. If you go this route though, do be aware that in some higher content you may not always be able to collect your wells if it ends up in a difficult area to reach in time. I would advise you to look into this first before heading off, and perhaps add in the Seeking Worlds mod for extra cover just in case. Now naturally our intellect stat is going to be at a good spot of 70, so we don't need to further invest in this area anymore. But adding in the Ashes Ashes mod is also pretty useful for reducing the time it takes to get our super up and ready. I've decided against this so I can add in the Dynamo mod and protect the Light mod via my helmet instead. Now call me crazy, but the Dynamo mod is just as useful as the Ashes Ashes mod as you're going to be using your Rift a lot in most content and although it won't be used in front of combatants, 9 times out of 10 you'll be using it behind cover to where combatants will be located so it can work depending on the situation. With adjustments though, I can still opt into using Ashes to Ashes and not lose too much of the focus of the whole build. It just depends on what you think is best. And leftover wise, we have the Fusion Scavenger mod to always allow us to gain ammo for our fusion in use, and the Parkour Deconstruction mod because we want that extra damage no matter where we are in game. So, as we have covered the subclass, weapons and stat usage, we can now move on to the next stage of the build, which is how it plays and how everything looks compiled. For head, we have Resilient, Dynamo and Protective Light mod. Arm, we have Discipline, Fastball and Elemental Ordnance mod. Chest, we have Discipline, Concussive Dampener, Sniper Damage Resistance and Explosive Wellmaker mod. Leg, we have Minor Discipline, Absolution, Fusion Scavenger and Taking Charge mod. Bond with Maya Discipline, Parkour Deconstruction, and Bountiful Well mod. Now with this covered, you have a pretty powerful grenade build that can track and destroy combatants with its immense damage. Well, except for the bosses of course. I feel that the buffer actions are on par with how they felt back in D1, as back then they actually felt like a threat in PvE and PvP. In PvP cases, using them could net you easy kills if the person hit by them had a bit of health taken away from them. And now in D2, they feel just like they did back in the old day, and being able to net multiple kills if players stay in one area for too long. 
and using this in PvE shows how the buff has made them once again viable as a grenade rather than a gimmick to some, and I found that they can easily clear minor and major combatants in one hit if they ever connect, no matter the level of content you play. With our setup, we can get back half to about 80% of our grenades back depending on how controversial feels, and from there our passive discipline can fill in the rest, or the worlds produced will fix that issue, so no matter where you are at, you're always going to be getting grenade NG back in seconds. And I feel that more and more people are starting to realise that actions can do a lot compared to what Vortex can do. They can track, clear, and take out large group of combatants that may be moving about a lot, and those not killed by the grenade itself will surely be taken out by the explosion instead. And this has been a long time coming as the grenades have always been good, they just lack that bit of damage. They're fun to use, but when it comes down to pushing more and more into end game, they start to fall behind until they are generally forgotten about. Now we can of course improve the build a bit more depending on what you like to do more of. If you're running an all void build, then using Nezrax instead of Controverse is the way to go as paired out with a void weapon will allow you to gain energy faster, which overall means you can use your abilities more and more. Alternatively, Eye of Another World with its exotic feature is the best of both worlds as it will be enhancing your stats and can be used with whatever weapon you want and not be tied down to just one weapon all the time. Or a Verity's Bar is a good shout if you want fast grenade stacking but a bit of extra damage as well along the way. Adding in perks like Wellspring, Demolitionist, or Adrenaline Junkie can greatly provide more heaps for using them effectively. My build now is simple and straight to the point, but it's flexible to be used elsewhere and that shows that it's not limited down to just one area or feature. Void 3.0 will definitely make using action even more dangerous depending on what abilities we get, and honestly I can see these being absolutely dominant considering that we don't have to build into them that much. They're just that great people, and I highly recommend you give them a try, as you really will not be let down by them. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub, and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content if you dig that type of stuff, link is always down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you all in the next one.